Don't know why I have this thing there, but whatever. So he is Jarmanic against and nah. So there's two ways to play this matchup. Um, wait, let's go back. I want to see the runes if I can find it. Wait, when was this game? Jarmanic is now. I want to see if I can find the runes and stuff because we need to know that, right? That's kind of important. Is this game? It was three days ago. All right, I found it. Good. This game. So, Jarvis and R. There's two ways to play this matchup. Um, either you go for this, what he's going right now. I do not like the runes. The runes are terrible. The runes are terrible. I'm going to be straight up honest. They're terrible. So, what you want to do is you want to have 80. That's correct. You want to have armor yellows. For sure. And then blues, you can have cooldown. That cool was by level. Yeah, was. You can uh, have matches per level. You can... You don't want to have flat matches. So you can have flat matches per level, cooldown, or armor. You can also have armor if you really want to. Also, TV, mouse leaf, thank you very much for the sub, bro. I appreciate it. And then the quint, you want to have an offensive rune, which is going to be 80 or attack speed. And in this case, I would probably choose 80 because I'm against a Nah. But you could also go attack speed. Another thing you could do is you could go... F if you want to win this game, you think you're better than him individually, you could go for Thunderlords. And you could snowball really hard with Thunderlords and go a lot of damage. You have those two options. This one's fine. Just the runes should be a little better. The skill order is Q, bigger than W, bigger than E. So this is all fine. Um, if you go aggressive, you could do Q, E, and then W. And you can also go Q, W, Q if you're just poking all the time. And you don't intend to little free kill him. Because you don't need the E skill if you don't intend to little free kill him. You only want that if you're ganking or at little free, right? Let's see, he invades level 1. This is good. They have a Blitzcrank in the team. Very important. You want to invade with a Blitzcrank. You should always be thinking about doing that. And they end up doing that. So that is very, very nice. All right, let's, let's go top. Why do I have this icon still? Okay, it's gone now. Sweet. So he, he runs top. There's nothing to look at here. The invade didn't work. Nothing happened. His team is stealing the enemy red buff. So what he needs to remember here is that... This is very important. His team is stealing the enemy red buff. That means his team is not going to help him out early game. The jungler is not going to help him out early game. It's a Kane. He's not going to help out early game anyways. Kane's going to be focused on farming. Wukong is... Could gank early, but it's not very good either. So both junglers are not very strong gankers. It's very important to know that. First mistake. First mistake. A lot of people pull the jungle. One thing you want to do as a top laner, because this guy's not doing anything right. Like, look here. DMC, you're not doing anything. You can also just ask questions, yeah, but you're not doing anything right now. You're standing still. You don't want to be standing still here. You have two options. Go in here, check where they're starting. That's fine. Or you pull the minion wave here and you freeze it. Like you pull the minions in here, so the minions will all attack the same minion. And there's a high chance, if Nile is pulling, that he loses a minion, right? Basically just wasting your level 1. I do go into the push. Uh, I don't have no problem with that. But you want to not push too fast. Like, you don't want to kill any minions because Nile isn't here yet. You want to try to hit all the minions somewhat low. This is fine. This is okay. But as you can see right now, the minions, his minions are attacking all three of the melee minions. Um, wait, I should probably remove Ole. I'll remove Ole while I'm doing this. Just... Because I think I'll look better. Is Ole oh, there? I think this looks better. But anyways, his minions are all attacking all three different minions. If you had pulled them, they'd have mostly been attacking one minion, and that minion would most likely have died before Nag gets back to the lane. There would be a good chance of that. So you could actually have had a minion advantage already. Season going on fine. You lost one. It's not a big deal. That's a decent Q. Um, one thing you want to think about while playing this matchup is your Qs should be hitting now. Your Qs should not be going for CS in most of the time. You should be trying to hit the Nava Qs. That's the main aspect because you want to be hitting him and doing damage to him, right? So at this point, you're going down toward... Or you're staying here. You should not be standing here. I don't know what you're doing. I have absolutely no idea what you're doing there. Um, you're standing still for no reason. You should be auto-attacking these minions. You want to push this wave in to his tower. You want to push this wave into his tower. There's no reason not to. And you want to kill him at all times. Um, going down here did nothing for you. Wukong's not going to gank you there. There's no point. And even if he does, he can't kill you. So just push, push, push. Hit the creeps. You're kind of not hitting them much. Now you cured the minions. That's bad. You want to be focusing on last hitting the auto attacks. You want to be last hitting the auto attacks. You don't want to be last hitting the Q. Your Q is to, meant to hit now. Your auto attacks are meant to hit the creeps. Um, you want to be in here and hit it. You don't ever want to take three hits. That's, a, that's not a thing that's important from now. You don't want to take three hits. You don't care about taking two hits. That's fine. The two things you want to avoid is taking free hits, and you want to avoid taking a Q straight to your first. If it goes through a minion, you don't care. You really don't care about getting hit. Obviously, you want to avoid it if you can, but you don't care that much. 
You're walking too far back. You don't need to. This is fine. All right, so he's pushing now. This is what you want anyways. You, you want, don't mind him pushing. Um, you're standing too far back, though. You want to be standing closer towards him. To bait out abilities or whatever, like standing around here instead is better. And then you want to be trying to cure him. You don't need to cure him until you level free, though. It's not that necessary. You can wait. You can wait for cures because you have a Dawn's Shield. You don't have much mana. You can just sit back as you're doing right now. Getting a farm. You can walk up and take the CS. Um, one thing you're doing a mistake, right? You're standing... A problem a lot of people do is they're standing all the way back here. Which means the second they walk up, Nas is going to know, oh, he's walking this path, straight this path, and he needs to walk straight instantly to get the CS, so I'm just going to hit my skills really easily. If you're instead just standing around here the whole time, moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then all attacking it, he doesn't know exactly where you're going to be standing. It's going to be much harder for him to hit you. You're basically just making yourself very obvious. And now, again, you're last taking the Q, which you don't want to do. You want to try to avoid that. This one wasn't absolutely horrible, but in general, you still want to try and avoid that. So let's see what happens. You're just going to farm. This is fine. You're taking it. You're still standing too far back all the time. You don't need to. You can go up and hit. Yeah, this is good. This is good. This, this is what you want to do. You want to be standing up here. You can take that one. You can take it. No problem. Good job. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want to do. Um, you just want to keep... You want to go hit the creep right now. You're too, a bit too afraid to hit it down. You will most likely lose the CS now. Again, your Q, that's not good. Um, you're wasting your Q, which means you have a high chance of fucking up CS, right? This is something a lot of people do. This is something a lot of people do. I'll show you exactly what it is. First of all, you can be hitting this creep. You can be preparing it for the tower. You know how much damage the tower does? It's like a little less than half health. You can prepare this minion and this minion for the tower damage. And you'll instantly one-shot them once they get hit by the tower once. So there you're making a mistake. But the bigger mistake that I see you're making, which will be a consistent mistake because you don't know it's a mistake, is this what you're doing right here. Um, this minion is lost. What you can do is auto-attack this one once, and both of these minions are free. But once it ends up happening is you think, I need to get this minion. So you end up wanting to auto-attack and queuing this minion, because it probably gives you the minion. You, you didn't even get the minion, but it might have given you the minion, right? But the chance of this fucking up all the other minions is really high. So you don't want to do that, because now you got that one minion, most likely, if you hadn't fucked it up, you would have gotten that one minion. But you'd be losing more minions because of this one play, and you'd been losing mana, and now you can't queue now. There's a lot of reasons why you don't want to queue there. So try to prepare the minions with auto attacks, right? Because now you fucked up this minion, for example. Um, and the third thing is, you're not getting a gang until you're level 4. You know that. So you don't want to skill Q or E. There's no point. You only skill E at level 3 if you're getting a gank. Else you just put 2 points into Q to make it stronger. Because you're never going to use E. You're not going to use E a single time. I promise you that right now. You're not going to use a single time on now without the jungle being here. And I haven't even watched this, right? I haven't watched this, and I know for a fact you're not going to EQ him. Or else you're making a big mistake. You're not going to be EQing him. Until level 4, right? And you, you, you're just queuing the farm. This this was okay, I guess. It was fine. You still lost the CS, whatever. Um, but see, you're level 4 now. You didn't EQ him a single time. There's no point in skilling E unless you're ganking. You weren't, so you don't want to do that. Right now, Kane's around. You're level 4. This could be a good gank, but you're staying so far back. Um, If you stand right here, behind the minions, you don't have to be afraid of him. He, if he cures you and hits you, you just walk back. Well, it's fine. No problem. You W. No problem. No damage, almost. And also, the problem is that you're standing here. Now, if you ever want to gank this guy, there's a really big distance. And if you start randomly walking up towards him, he's going to be thinking, holy shit, this Jarwin is playing passive the whole time, and now he's walking towards me? Why is he doing that? that that's what's going to go through his mind, unless he's like fucking tunnel visioning, right? Um, what you want to do is you want to stand as close to him as possible at all times without getting hit. So standing here is better for you. Because right now, you, you, you can never that get That was this. legitness. Yeah, it was. Ooh, real rich, bro. Thank you very much for the sub with Twitch Prime, bro. But basically, you can never gank him here because you're standing so far back. It's never going to work. It could have worked. You guys could actually have ganked him if you stood further up. That, that's the main issue there. Um, you're just going to be focusing on farming now. You're not going to be doing anything. You should... You're going to lose this one. You could cure this one. This one could have cured. Um, you should cure it early, though. You should cure it while it's walking to watch it, not once it's standing still. But you should you could have cured that one. That one's fine. Most of the time, I say it's bad, but this one would have been fine. And you tried to do it, so it's okay. You get hit by that. It's okay. You don't take too much damage. It's fine. No problem. Take a little bit of damage, but it's not a big deal. You're still healthy and everything. King could be coming back. No, he's not. He could be ganking top again. At this time, still, try to stand up here. Just stand right behind the minion. Just stand right behind the minion. You, you can gank him. You might not necessarily kill him, but you can definitely gank him. 
He even, like, it doesn't matter, because you are 2v1, right? You're going at him. This is good gank. This is good gank. You're going in on him. Kane is coming up from side. This is nice. You're getting onto him. Kane had red buff. He's going to be slowed. You guys will probably get this kill if you keep chasing. Okay, you didn't. I think you could maybe have gotten that kill. You still had flash. You would have your EQ coming soon, no? Wait, let me check. I think you should have kept chasing there, both of you guys. I think that should have been a kill. Let's see what happens. Your EQ comes up in 6 seconds. Kane's Q is up again in 2 seconds. You can definitely chase this guy down. You even have your EQ. You have your EQ combo almost, right? Wait, let's watch the normal speed just to make sure I'm right that the EQ comes up soon. Because it might be bugged because of the um, speed difference. Alright, so let's see. Let's just look at the time. He doesn't have flash anymore. You have 6 seconds. You can definitely chase him down. Kane is going to be up in 2 seconds. You, you could have chased him down. He would have died. 100%. You both have flashes. But... You, you didn't chase, you should have. Um, you're not fucked from it, though. It's just a missed kill opportunity. You know you 2 versus 1. He doesn't have flash. He can't run. You had a rip-off slow on him. You have a lot of catching abilities. Just keep going. Now, what you want to do is... You know he's basing. You know he's going to TP back, most likely, unless he's bad. If he's walking bad, he's really bad. If he's walking back, you want to freeze. Because um, that can happen to your elo. He can happen that he makes a mistake. You want to just freeze it. You don't want to base yet. You have no reason to base. You're full health. You have good mana. You don't need to kill him. You don't need to dominate this lane. So you don't need to be healthy. Um, or I mean, you don't need to be strong. You don't need to have a lot of mana. You don't need to be able to fight him. You just need to be able to farm. And then you want to get a later base on than him. Because then you're going to have the pressure in the lane, right? So far, you're farming. He's losing a lot of minions. You want to freeze. You want to freeze. Don't hit any creeps. Just last hit only. You're doing that. This is great. This is really great. You're only lasting. This is perfect. This is exactly what you want to do. This is perfect. Um, you could maybe have frozen it better or whatever, but it, this is perfect. Kind of. The uh, decision making at least. Um, one thing you want to do if you're doing this is try to last it the creeps at a really low health. Like you, you're just lasting because maybe it's half is lasting. That's not fine. Like it's not a big deal. But if you want to optimize it, you want to last it the creeps as, as low health as possible. Are you going him? It's not a big deal. But if you do this, you need to be ready to base soon. You want to try and push in now. You want to try and push in now. Push as hard as you can. Just hit every minion. Just keep hitting. Hit, 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 hit. All the time. You're doing somewhat okay with that. You, you, I don't know why you walked. You lost the kind of minion. Whatever. Um, wasn't good. You want to be trying to push this wave though. You, you need to be focused on pushing in. You have all the creeps defending you. So you're going to be pushing in the wave. While you're pushing, you need to make sure you last it. Like, it doesn't matter if you push a little slow. Making sure you last it. Here, you don't want to base. You don't need to base right now because you had the minion bench but you can what are but that's fine no big deal actually because you do have teleport you're going to tp back anyways um all right you're going to tp back right please don't walk back please don't walk back see the items you buy the items you buy are fine um i'm not going to recommend you to buy pink watch because it's low elo it's gold but please don't walk back like this just use your teleport to get back to the lane the lane is frozen to him. You're losing a lot of CS. You shouldn't be losing all these CS. We, we can look at how many CS you're going to be losing because you're walking back. Um, some people maybe tell you, oh, save TP, save TP, but please, just don't. All right, let's look at CS you missed. So you lose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, no, 6, 7, a. You get XP for that one. So you lost 7 CS in XP and lost 80 XP in gold. No, 80 CS in gold. It's really, really bad for you. You cannot lose that many CS. Um, EQ. That was a good EQ combo. It was really good because you have so many creeps to help you out. It was really good. You missed it, so it was obviously terrible, right? But it was a really good idea. You did the right thing. You just missed it, and there's nothing big about that because you just got to get better at hitting it, right? Um, you can Q him here all the time. You should be looking to Q now all the time. Whenever he queues up, just Q him. Q him. Q him. Q him. Stand behind the minion. Q him. Stand behind the minion. Q him. Um, the best times to Q is... The second he walks up to auto attack a creep, you Q. Right? For example, right here, right here. Q, 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 Q. He can't dodge it. Just Q the right, right down. You're not using your ability. Now you're Qing. This is a terrible Q. This, it hits. But the problem is you don't know where he's going to be standing. You don't know the exact path he's going to be taking. So it's much harder. You want to Q when he hits the creeps because it's free. And he needs to hit creeps in this position. Makes it very easy for you, right? Let's look at your cooldown. Your Q should be back up in a second. So it shows up, but I don't think it is. But it should be up now. Um, you can kill him right there, it's free. You, he right here is free because he's walking right towards you. You can just kill him. The second he walks towards you, it's easy to hit. Um, and the second he's hitting a creep, is easy to hit. Terrible Q it hits. No, but like, even if it hits, right, you can you can do a bad Q that hits. It doesn't matter about the result. You can also do a, 
Or you can do a bad cue that hits. You can also do a really, really good cue that misses because she just did some insane pathing or whatever, right? And does it really nicely. That doesn't mean the cue itself is bad. Nice base stopping. I like it. It was good. Um, the only thing I would say you should do differently is then you're base stopping him like this. The Jarman. What you want to do is you want to base stop the first one, the Q. Because your E is longer range than Q. Which means you can walk up here and you can base stop the Q. And then if he spaces again around here, you can base stop the E. So he puts more pressure, which means he needs to walk further back. So Q is better on the first base stop. It's not a massive big deal, uh, but I still want to find it out. It is better to do it that way. So let's see. You have one potion. You should just run your potion. Yeah, not full health. There's no reason not to run your potion. Just use your potion. Um, again, do, do the same thing, but try to stop in the queue first if you can without being tower range. Right now, you're focusing 200 CS. You need to stop him. You stop him. You have to use E right now because you won't get in range, I think. Um, but yeah, Q is always better to stop. If you can't queue for free, use the Q instead. If you can't, then use the E. E is basically only meant to be used if you can't use the Q. And so, you're walking up to him right here. This is very dangerous. You can maybe kill him though. It's gonna work. You're gonna. Oh, you missed a, You missed hit by a uh, creep or whatever. Um, this should not work. This should not have worked because he should never let you walk up to him like that. I think you should try to initiate the fights with EQ combos. And uh, the only reason it worked that you straight up walked up to him was because he was bad. Um, it can work. As this can work in high yield too, right? Um, I don't know if people remember, but there was a game in Rift Rivals where it was Vichy Chachi versus Darshan, I think. I think it was Darshan. I'm not entirely sure it was Darshan. But basically, he walked up to Na. He played a relay. He walked up to Na and he, he stunned him. That should never happen. It happened pro play. So things like this can happen, even in pro play. It can happen. But it's not the right play, right? It's, it's a very risky play that only works if the Na fucks up. Alright, so you queue him. This is nice. It's good. You walking backwards. This is good. You can fight him. You can fight him. He just took a tower hit. You can fight him. You don't have to be afraid of him. You could even have all in there. I think you'd have won it. But it's fine. Not fighting is okay. Could have. Doesn't matter. Because you'll be fine. You didn't know where the jungler was necessarily. You will be fine by doing it this way. And just farming. You're already ahead. You don't need to snowball. Your team is winning too. So you don't need to be taking risky plays. Um, There's one thing you don't want to do. I just saw you do it. This is really important actually. You don't ever want to take cues from Nah while you're standing in front of creeps. Just try to stand behind creeps whenever you're walking. For example, here you're walking right in front of the creeps. Try to stand behind the creeps more. And here especially, here especially. The second there's no creeps, you have nothing to do here. Walk behind your creeps. Behind your creeps, always just walk back. It's like two steps, right? It doesn't make you slow. It doesn't do anything negative towards you, except make sure you take less damage. Because right now you take a cube, which was a lot of damage. So behind the creeps, is like almost no damage. All right, you EQ him. Uh, you missed it, so this is kind of bad. You're going to keep finding him because you're swung him. That's really nice dodge. This is really, really well done, aside from the fact that you missed the EQ combo. Um, it's very risky to go in if you miss EQ. He should be winning against you in those cases. He, if he if he's good, he can just kite you around. He can legit just kite you around the slows and ranged advantage. So it's very dangerous to make a play if you don't hit the EQ. You need to make sure you hit that one before going in. Um, I would just say this was bad. Even though you won out, it was still bad because he didn't kite... Um, because he could have kited you, right? The fact that he didn't kite you doesn't mean your play was good there. Alright, let's see what happens. You're pushing. That's nice. You have a decent amount of gold one. Well, let's see. You have six more gold. You don't need to base. You're going down to the cane. This is nice. Um, Basically pushed in. You're going to go do something else. This is really nice. You're probably going to gank mid, I think. That's what I think you're doing. You don't have that much vision. You don't know where he is. But Sunra is very easy to kill. Killing brand or killing this Sunra is very easy. You have Brand. Roaming is low. He's also very good. You see that Wukong is there and you back off. I like that. And then you're coming back in. You missed the EQ combo. That's bad, obviously. Um, like there's, there's not much more to say there. You missed the EQ combo. You could have gotten a kill. It was bad. But the idea was right. What you were trying to do was right. And your assist making was good. You just missed the combo. And the, there's, there's not much to that, right? If you missed the combo, that's just, that's just it. It's no big deal. As long as your assist making is good, I don't really care how your combos are. If you miss 100 comments in a row, I wouldn't care. As long as that you was legitness. Right yeah, it was. Thank huh. you very much for the sub, Mr. Chinese or Korean name. I don't know what it is, but thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, is that smart boy? Well, thank you. All right, so. Right now, what do you want to do? Let's think about what you want to do for a second, right? You have a Twitch in your game. Your Twitch just died, though. Your bot lane is behind by a little bit. You're ahead by a little bit as well. Your item build is fine. 
Um, this is bad. You want to take free hits that you know want to do. And you miss your eco combo again. You miss eco combos a lot, actually. Hmm. Well, what up? You took a lot of damage here. The whole thing was terrible. Um, basically, the, the the two things I've been saying in this mess up the whole time is you do not ever want to take free hits. Walk back. You don't want to take free hits. Just walk back. Unless you really need to, you don't want to do it. Uh, and then if you EQ, you need to make sure it is really, really important that it hits. If you, it's better not to EQ if you're not confident hitting it. It's better not to EQ. Um, and the second it misses, you need to walk back. Just walk back. Just get out of there. If you miss the EQ combo, get out of there. Like, it's, it's not a matchup you're necessarily supposed to win. You're doing well. You're doing better than him, right? You're doing much better than us, so that's good. But but there's, there's a couple of core mistakes that you do over and over again. I see you just farming here. You could have tried to dodge that one. Um, basically, what, what do you know is going to happen? It's better for you to dodge it and lose one minion than to get hit by it and get that one minion. Um, th this is something every low elo player will do every single time. Basically, right here. You're under the tower, right here. The creep's going to stand right here. Nah is going to be thinking, you go for the CS, he queues. So what you do is you walk up to CS and it's about to die, and then you turn around, dodging it, and then you go for the next one instead. Right, like, 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 basically how it would happen is this. He queues, you know he's going to queue, you know he's going to queue in this exact range, you know exactly where he's going to queue, he's going to queue right here, every single time, everyone would do it. You just dodge it, just dodge it, be ready, be prepared, you know. And even if you fuck up dodging it, just be prepared for it but, and try to do it, you know. Just, ha just have it in your mind that you, you can try and dodge this one. There's a good queue, you hit him, you hit all the creeps, it's perfect. Nothing but that, it was really perfect, it was really nice. Um, you're really low right now. You kind of need a base. Or you need to play really, really passive now. You don't want to take any damage. You don't, don't mind giving up CS. Um, just make sure you don't take damage. That's, that's your number one goal. I don't know why you're standing still. You're probably taking a phone or some shit, because you, you're fapping. Let's be honest, you're fapping here. Not even going to come in because you're not doing anything. Are you walking backwards? That's fine. This is good, you dust it. That was bad, you got hit by it. Um, there's no reason for you to walk up. You walk up for no reason, you're out of range already, but... Whatever, you can look to kill this guy right now. You do have your cane around. He's coming in. You can walk up to EQ him. You have ultimate as well. He's If you EQ him right here, he will be out of his ultimate, so you can EQ him right now. Being a bit passive. Um, you got hit by the Q again, that's bad, but... Whatever, you're walking up for the gank. Kane is coming up from the side. EQ him, EQ him, EQ him right there. Dude, that was the perfect time. That's the perfect time. Let's go back to it. Let's go back to it. You, you can see in his animations how it works. You can see in the animations how it works, right? Basically, uh, as I've been saying the whole time, then somebody auto attacks, that's the perfect time to counter attack them. With any ability, like whatever you have. The second the auto attacks something, you see him walking up to auto attack you. You know you're in range of him. The second, he, like right here, the second he starts launching that, right now, right now, EQ him. He cannot dodge your EQ. He cannot. If you eco right now, he cannot dodge it. You hear the sound, like, what what our NAS sound have? The second you hear that, you just, you just go. Instantly just go. No hesitation, just go on it. Uh, because right now, you don't go. And th at this point, it's hard to hit him, right? At this point, it's hard to hit him. You don't know if he goes up wars, down wars, whatever. The, the reason is maybe easy is because the minion is blocking him, but... It, it, it's going to be hard for you to hit him now. And of all your gang, it's going to be so much worse because you didn't initially EQ him. This was a free kill. It was a free kill. That you lost because you didn't initially EQ the second you had a perfect opportunity to do it. Um, you you want to look for those timings. He's auto tank a CSQ him. You, you want to kill him, EQ the second you auto tank CS. Don't try to EQ randomly. You want to aim at the good times for it. Because that's where it's easy for you, right? You want to make the combos of yours as easy as possible to hit. Um, like, like if I go and take custom game, like, I, I give you an example, right? Often, like, sometimes I do a fun shit where I play, like, Mundo versus Mundo in the Baron Pit. We walk back and forth, back and forth here, you know, and you try to hit his R. Hitting these Qs is not that easy because you don't know which path he's taking. And he's kind of like, he's locked in a small area like this. So it should be really easy, right? But it's not that easy to hit them all. Because I can't predict his movement. I don't know where he's going to move because there's no reason for him to move anyway. His only reasoning to move around is to dodge my abilities. So you want to give him a reason to do something and then you know exactly what he's going to do. And you can predict his movement and cure at those times, or use your abilities at those times. It's the best way to hit skill shots. is to predict your enemy's movement and slam. Alright, so you're pushing in, that's fine. You do not have to teleport. You push it in, you should roam down. Um, 
Do you have any wards? Do you have a ward? You put a ward here. This is not necessarily good. Because you know right now that Kane is bottom. You see this. He's ganking bottom. Which means because Kane is ganking bottom, the enemy jungler needs to show bottom. Or he needs to be top. So you already know somewhat where the enemy jungler is. And you're also going to be walking into the enemy jungler. This ward is going to be timing out in like half the time. It's like 30 seconds, 40 seconds, whatever. You want to walk in here and ward. It's much better for you to walk in here and ward like here or here. This ward doesn't really benefit you much. So enemy team just kill your bot lane. That sucks for you. Um, you're walking down to mid. That's good. This is good. Walking down to mid is really good. You can push mid in. I would push this quickly. Q, auto, auto, auto. Everything's great. And then maybe even walk towards bottom or walk back to top. You have a lot of options here. You decide to walk towards bottom. This is fine because now your bot lane can go top. Your bot lane can go top. You can just go bottom. That's fine. You save your bot lane from a lane that they're losing. And you might be able to pick up kills. You should be telling your bot lane to go top. They're probably retarded because it's low elo. But you walk down all the way from top. You get mid farm. You walk down. You get a kill in Jinx. It's really good. Roaming in low elo. Roaming is king. Because people don't have a minimap. It's broken. Like They're sticking you on the platinum elo. There's no minimap. It doesn't exist for most people. So roaming is really overpowered. In comparison to what it is my elo for example. This play was really fucking brilliant. Um, your team is fucking up by going bottom. This shouldn't be. But regardless, the play was really good. You Twitch should have gone top, taking all the juicy farm, and you guys have been so far ahead right now. You guys have been so far ahead. You need to run top as fast as possible, though. Um, one thing, though. This is bad. This is bad. That's not a bad thing. First of all, you shouldn't be running top. That's not your job. That should be your Twitch. But since he doesn't do it, you have to just be like, okay, what up? Twitch fucks up. I'll go top. But here you should be basing and then going top. Because basing, buying Nina Tabbies and running top will be pretty much faster. I'm pretty sure it'll be faster doing that than running all the way top. And you'll have new items. You can buy Nina Tabbies and you can buy a Health Crystal, Ruby Crystal, or a Long Sword, which gives you an advantage in the lane, right? You want to be as strong as possible. So you should definitely base here. Running all the way to the top is bad. Staying around here, helping your team is it's questionable, it's fine, whatever. Um, but you don't want to run all the way to the top. It's so far. And you don't want to do these. You do not want to do this. This is really bad. Really, really bad. You're currently losing minions top. You want to get there. You want to get off to this lane as fast as possible. You don't need to do these. Kane wants just these anyways. It's way better for Kane to get them in this situation. All right, so you're running top. Um, you're pushing out. Push as fast as possible. That's what you want to do. And then you want to roam down again. You do have the option. You have flash. You do have the option of ganking mid. You have the option of getting walls into enemy jungle. You don't have any walls, but you can just scout quickly. You can maybe take the plant back. That'd be nice. You can take... This one for a little bit of extra mana and denying it from them, right? That, that's the main thing. The mana is not that important, but you can deny the plan from them. Um, you, you don't really want to stay top here because you shouldn't be able to do anything. Let's look at the map. See, they're, they're right here, right? You, you, you can't take this out anyways. You're hitting these creeps. is not going to help. It's not going to do anything for you. And right now you can get ganked. They have the option of ganking you, right? They are you as well going for you. You'll probably be fine. You'll probably be fine. It's not going to be a big deal, but you could have walked in. And you should still do it. You should still do it. For example, if you had scouted the fact that the enemy had done the crap, you'd know, oh, we're going to stop lane because the enemy have crap. You'd ha already have all of this information. Now you don't. Now you know that Wukong is most like top because the crap is down, right? And he's coming top. So you just want to play passive. Kane is bot side. Wukong is top side. Your team is making plays bottom. Your only job in this moment in time is to survive. Just don't do anything risky. Don't die. Be fine. Maybe try to stop them from doing Herald if they do Herald. Uh, don't put a pink ward down. This is really bad. Is this really just put down? No, it was already there. What up? You don't want to put a pink ward down if you have one because you know they're already too top. It doesn't matter if you see them. It does not do anything because you know they're there. Obviously, I, I flame you for the pink ward, but it's not yours, so that's fine. Just if you had one, don't put it down. Just wait. You want to put the pink wards down to get your vision because it's really easy for them to clean it, right? And th this shows exactly why you do not want to put one down if you had one. Because it's really easy for them to clean. Now Wukong is mid. You can easily go fight this guy. And this guy's a moron. You will fuck him up. But if Wukong hadn't shown mid. And they were still too top. You're dead right here. You see Wukong mid. So this is good play. I'm just saying. like It's really easy for them to clean that pink ward. Right? Um, now greeted for it though. You get a really good kill. You played this really perfect. Because you went in the second you saw the Wukong. It's really nice. I don't know if that's why you went in. But this was really, really textbook perfect and clean. It's really great. Pushing is normal. Is what you should do. You know that Nash shouldn't have TP because you, you saw him use it to the bottom. So just push, 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 push all the way and take the tower. This is the first tower of the game. This is really huge. Focus on the tower. Focus on the tower. 
Don't kill the creeps. Don't kill the creeps. You you cure the creeps. You cure them. You can cheer them out, but you don't auto attack them so much. Only auto attack last it. You want to focus on the tower. Focus on the tower. It's way better for you. You're wasting so much time. Imagine that Wukong comes top or mid lane comes top. Well, whoever comes top and stops you from killing this first blood tower right now. If it wasn't first blood tower, I wouldn't care if you kill the creeps. It doesn't fucking matter. But it's the first blood tower. You need to try and focus on getting that tower down. It's really really important. And you only want to last it to see us if they're red though. Alright, so this is fine. You're making your minions die to the tower. That's fine, no problem there. You want to be pushing in one more wave. You can do that. Just strong enough to do it. You're going to go for it as well. That's nice. Um, Okay, he's pushing back. You're going back. That's fine because he is pushing back to you. You see now up here. The main thing you want to avoid though is now not going here, not going to help his team and then getting a lot of farm afterwards. That would be horrible. This is fine. You're basing. You're going to buy ninja tabbies. You're going to buy... What would I go for here? Wait, I'm not, I'm not going to see what you buy. I'm just going to make a guess here. This guy doesn't have any armor. You don't need cleaver. Cleaver's still nice. I would go for... I'd probably still go cleaver. I'd probably still go cleaver. I'd probably go cleaver. Even if they don't have armor, I'd go cleaver, I think. Because you have a lot of AD in your team, right? Cleaver's really good here. You go straight up to tank. Actually, you had a lot of money. And then you're going to need to tap it right, yeah. I don't think Titanic is bad. I think both items are definitely good because the enemy doesn't have armor. Um, th th there's not a bad buy there. There's just two different buys. I'd probably go Cleaver just because I want the cooldown. I don't want to be able to constantly go on him if I'm going in for the cooldowns. But Titanic is completely fine. Completely fine. Alright, you're pushing. This is good. Everything is great. Everything is great. Everything is great. So what do you want to do here? You have two wards. You can get mid. You don't have ultimate though. Wait, when did you use ultimate? Why is the timer fucked up for me? I don't know why the time. Oh, you just used up here? I'm confused. Oh, you used to... I'm, I'm really confused. What else? You don't have ultimate. Um, you probably won't be able to kill mid. You want to have some wards out. You want to clean his jungle. You, you would want to clean his jungle here. I would be doing the wolves probably. I'd just be killing them. There's no reason... Oh, you get a cast. That's actually really nice. I'll be killing the wolves, I'll be auto attacking them. And you can still do this exact play while auto attacking the wolves until you see this guy getting caught. Um, it's just more efficient, right? If you get the wolves, if you, that's nice. If you don't, then you lose a tiny bit of health, but not gonna matter. You guys end up dying here. I don't really know why you die. Wait, let me see what happens. I think you missed the EQ combo again, that's the problem. You can't hit the EQ combo, so you kill them too slowly. Mm, I don't think the play is necessarily bad. They had a ward on you, they had a ward on the cane, that's why it fails. I think of what? No, they don't have any vision. They legit don't have any vision. I, I think I think this play is really good. Um, it doesn't work. The only thing you can optimize here is hitting these walls. It, it's sad that it doesn't work. Let's be honest, that's really sad. But I, I still think the play is good. It's just really unfortunate for you. It's really, really unfortunate that it doesn't work. You could have all attacked him a little earlier. You could actually have killed him earlier and played a little better, I think. But at the end of the day, it sucks. Um, you should try and take the plan to get out, though. You could potentially get out by using the plan. Because if you use the plant at a different area than him, he flies the opposite side, and you might be able to get out. Because just running from an eye is impossible. You can't run from him if you don't have EQ up. It's really, really difficult, and he'll just chase you down. You still get out, but at the end of the day, it's still, as I said, really, really difficult to do. So using the plant will be much more beneficial for you, because then you're, then you're just straight out. You're out. The second you use the plant, he jumps the other way, you're out. Because you almost died here. That would optimize the play. In general, just always try to use plants to escape, if you can. Yeah, I, I saw you didn't die. That's really good. But but at the end of the day, it was really close. And if you used the plan, it wouldn't have been that close, right? Oh, well, it was a really good play, though. I like this play in here. I really like this play. It was really nice. It's just unfortunate it didn't work out that well. Because it, it should have, right? It was really lucky for the enemy team that they managed to counterplay that. Like, they're just in the right places at the right times. Um, but I'll do that play 10 out of 10 times. I'll, I'll do it again and again and again because it was so good. All right, you put a ward down. That's fine. Decent ward. I don't think you need to ward the bush though. You can just ward here to give even more vision. This this ward gives more vision, right? Like a lot of people think the bush is overpowered, but at the end of the day, this ward gives you vision from this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle. And if they're here anyways, you know where they are. So it doesn't matter if they're in the bush. Um, you don't need that bush vision. The other ward would have been better for you. So you're pushing. This is good. You're pushing in all the way. Team is fighting. You need to be paying attention to that. I don't know if you are. You can't help them though. You won't be able to do anything here, so you should just stay top and keep pushing. Kane kills two people, that's very, very nice. 
Um, at this point, you want to go into mid and dive them. Because you know the enemy mid is low health. You know they'll probably use some stuff because they just fought, right? They're just fighting. You know that your team is all full. Each Blitzcrank is not full of mana, but he's got enough to use an ability soon. Uh, it's on man. He already got enough for some training. But anyways, you know your team is healthy. You know you can fight them. You know that free people only. And you know all your stuff is up. You can see it in the corner, right? You have all the ultimates up. Alright, so let's see. You should definitely be mid here. You would you would have been able to kill every single one of them if you went mid. 100%. You, you get this tower. If you don't kill them, that's because they back off and you get the tower. Instead, you're trying to get top tower. You cannot take the tower against an hour. You cannot. It's almost impossible. Basically, well, whatever I think in these situations is... Um, like you push it in here. Here's the room. The second room. Because he, here's the thing you have to think about. Can you solo kill now under the tower? If yes, stay. Can you not solo kill now under the tower? That was legit. If you can yeah, do something yeah. else. If you can't do anything else, then try to hit the tower until now comes and then you back off. That, that, that's the three options you have, right? So basically, you can kill now, you stay and kill now. If you can't kill now, you look to move. If you can't move, if there's not an option, there's an option here, right? But sometimes there's not. If there's not an option, you stay hit tower till he comes and then you just leave. Um, in, in this scenario here, there's definitely options should have moved mid. It's way better. Hitting this tower doesn't really benefit you that much because at the end of the day, you do a thousand damage to it. You'd have done that exact damage in the mid tower. You'd have taken a full mid tower, right? And you'd have killed people, most likely. Also, sound graphy. Thank you very much for the sub. But yeah, basically, you, you want to be looking to go mid here. It would have been way better. If you still get a kill mid, it's really nice. Your team did good. You would have gotten two kills and a tower. You still might get the tower. I don't know, right? But at the end of the day, you want to be grouping to the team with Jaman. You want to be making plays with Jaman. You want to be making stuff with Jaman. Nash should be better than you in the 1v1, and you should be better than, than him at making plays, at setting up plays. So your main goal is to kill mid, gank mid, gank bot, kill mid, gank mid, all the time. Whenever you can do that for free, right? And this was one situation where you could do it for free. Alright, so you're pushing in. Um, so you need to do this. I would actually recommend you not to push this wave and base earlier, but you can base now as well. Um, I would just say base, because your entire team is in base. So I don't know what the fuck Sunwa is doing. She's just fucking around. But... I would mention you should be basing. Because you can get your cleaver. It's really good. And your team is in base. So you can't do anything anyways. And also you want to be on the bottom side of the map right now. You want to be down here. Because Baron is up. You want to be down here because you have teleport. And then you want to push in all the time. Roam mid. Push. Roam mid. Push. Roam mid. Um, you, you don't want to be on the top of the map. And you want to have your item. You want to have your cleaver. It's really a big item to bike. And big... Basically, as a top laner, you want to be on mostly, mostly like 90% of the time. You want to be on the opposite side of the map from wherever you're playing. So right now, your team should be playing on the top side of the map because Baron's up. Drake is not up. It's not even a good dragon. You want to be on this side of the map. If it's a fire dragon, then being top side is completely fine. But it's not a fire dragon. The only reason I'd say you should ever be top if it's not a fire, if it's like a shit dragon and Baron's up is if you're fighting for the enemy red buff or the enemy bot towers. But in this case, there's no reason for you guys to fight for the enemy bot towers or the enemy top tower. Alright, so let's see. You base anyways. You just didn't know exactly. You could have based earlier. You could have based earlier. That's the only difference here. You base anyways. You do the exact same thing as I just said. Um, your bot lane should never be here. This is terrible for the bot lane. But that's not your fault. Um, but basically, you end up doing the exact same thing you're supposed to do. Just a bit too slow. You, you basically need to know this information the second you push what you want to do. You see the team fighting, you want to go fight, this is fine, and then we jungle. You guys are stronger, you miss your EQ. You ultimate, you kill, you don't even kill everything. But whatever, you get you win the fight, it's all good. Um, I might be on the bottom side here. You want to just push in, push, 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 take the tower. You guys are going to win this game, I think, from this now. That's my assumption. Actually, no, it's going to be a bit longer, I just checked. It's going to be a bit longer. Alright, so you take this, it's all good. Nothing wrong, you back off, that's perfect. Um, you have... Do you have one Cloud Dragon? I don't know if you... I think you do. I don't know if this is bugged or not. If you have one Cloud Dragon, it's really important to get the second one. Because you have a catch comp. You have Jarman who can catch people. You have Twitch who can run up at people. You have Blitzcrank who can catch people. Getting Cloud Dragons is really, really good on these kind of comps. So you want to get this one if you can. And that, that should be your priority right now. Getting Cloud Dragon. Getting the enemy red buff even. You don't want to do what you just did though. That's just really, really bad. It doesn't... It doesn't do anything to you, right? But the problem is, if you go mid, clean the mid, and run out. You cannot clean the mid and run 
in towards them, right? Because your team is going to go for the dragon. And if you want to go for the red buff, you walk this way. You take the safe path or safe path. Unless you need to do otherwise. Um, as you can see right here, what happens is they don't really have a good catch comp. They have Sorak Cat. They have, they have not the best catch comps. But they could catch you here. They could potentially catch you. He is, and he's going to slow you. Maybe with a flash, he can maybe catch you. He's going to burn your flash. But Wukong's coming down as well. Their, their goal to come back in the game is to catch somebody. And you're putting yourself in a position where you can get caught. You don't get caught, but you could have gotten caught. You don't need to take that risk at all. It's much safer to just take the other path as a general rule of thumb. Because it is a small risk. Nothing happened. It's a small risk that you don't need to take. Taking red buff is good. Guys are fine. You guys can legit just go mid lane. You guys are way strong in them. There's no reason for you to split push. You want to just regroup with the team and go mid. Um, you're fighting. This is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Like, this is good. You guys are fighting. Blitzcrank died. It's not good from him. He was in bad position. But fighting is good. And you guys are going to keep going in here, sure. Okay. You, you keep going in, actually. You do catch him. I think it was a big B because he was flashed. Like, the only reason I wouldn't keep going is because he flashed, right? He was already out. Um, if he hadn't flashed, you should have kept going for sure. You blocked that. That's nice. He still dies, but he tried to block it. It was a good mindset. Good decision making. I like it. Catch Soraka. This is really good. Terrible ultimate from Sundra, but really good that he catch her. And then you're going to go mid again. Well, what you should do, honestly, is just group the team. Just group the team and fight. You guys are so much stronger. Bait Baron if you need to. It's fine. Baiting Baron is really good. You have an insanely good engager cat comp. So Baiting Baron is really fucking good. Especially because you have two Cloud Dragons. You can run people down at all times. If you can make your team Bait Baron, the enemy team will die every time. Every single time. Because they, they cannot check Baron against a Javan, the EQ ultimate. A Syndra with the stuns. A Kane who can come from the side. And I assume we got the stunning form as well. Like the red form, Rast. A Blitzcrank who can hook people. And a Twitch who can flank them. Like literally come up from behind and kill them. They can never check that bound. So you guys are so far ahead that you should be checking the bound. And also, another thing. You have the bottom inhibitor. This is the best inhibitor in the game. If you want to do bound. It's legit the best. Top lane doesn't matter much. Mid lane doesn't matter much. In comparison to the bot lane. Bot lane is so fucking important. Because they have to send somebody down here. You guys want to be setting up that bound. It's really important. Somebody just pinged as well. That's good. Pushing out top. Nothing wrong with that. Keep pushing. Your bot lane is bot. You're putting pressure. You're not doing the bound, so staying top is fine. Trying to get tower is good. Because of the situation, right? You should be doing bound as a whole team, but if you're not, if your bot lane is bottom as they are, pushing top and putting as much pressure as you can is the right choice, right? And you're doing that. Bot lane is killing the enemies. It was also perfect, and you're doing the right thing. Um, right now, you know, enemy team is dead or bottom. You know this information. You want to EQ this guy as fast as possible. You want to go on him instantly and try and kill him with these two people. Because you're two versus one. You need to abuse the fact that you want numbers. You just want to EQ him. EQ him right here. Bam. EQ, 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 EQ. EQ, EQ. You should be EQing him. You should really be EQing him. You don't want to... Look, 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 look. I don't think he caught him. No, he didn't catch him. Um. I, again, back, back to what we talked about, right? You want to EQ, then he's distracted, then he's doing something. That's, that's the right timing. He's all attacking that minion. EQ him. He's auto attacking. He's auto attacking somebody in a second. He's auto attacking right there. EQ him. EQ. Bam, bam, bam. Right here. This is the perfect timing. He cannot dodge it. You EQ him. Your teammate follows up. And you also you tank it him, right? You want to be the one engaging here. This, this would be really good EQ timing. Again, he's going to auto attack. EQ. Bam. He's dead. But the problem is here, right? That this is what happens. Your teammate queues in. Now this guy's going to E away. He got a lot more time to react to your EQ combo. So the chance for EQ combo hitting is much lower. And as you can see, he does sidestep it because he had so much time to do other things. Um, your EQ combo wasn't necessarily terrible. It could have been slightly better, but it wasn't terrible. It's just the fact that he was allowed so much more time to sidestep. You still get the kill, but that doesn't mean the play was good, right? It could have been so much better. We get the kill, that's nice. Your team is ending, this is really good. And you won the game. Oh, I think it was pretty good performance from you in comparison to the other guy, right? You played much better than him. You did the right things. But you need to focus on using your abilities at the right time so then you can kill him for free. Like easily. So that, that, that's the main thing I think. Like you want to make your EQs as easy to hit as possible. Or your Qs for that. Take any skills you're champion playing. You want to make it as easy as possible to hit. You don't want to make it difficult. Because any skill shot is difficult if you don't have... If you can't predict this movement, right? Then 